Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I'll be presenting a case of a 44-year-old female patient presented to ER with deliberate self-harm by consuming around 20 tablets of uh, desvenlafaxin 100 mg which is around 2 gram with 20 tablets of quetiapine 25 mg which is around uh, 500 mg total dose. Today at uh, uh, that day at around 12.30 pm in her home and she had following that she had giddiness and uh, loss of balance and she presented here. Initially she went to outside hospital to, uh, after 2 hours of ingestion and uh, there they just gave gastric lavage and referred here. Here on arrival patients uh, uh, conscious oriented but minimally drowsy. Airway is patent, uh, no uh, any pooling of secretions or gurgling sounds. Uh, but breathing wise, we had saturation of around 98 percentage, respiratory rate of 16 per minute, and air entry was bilaterally equal. Circulation wise, BP was 160, and pulse rate was on higher side. Tachycardia was there, 126 per minute was there. And uh, disability wise, GCS was initially, uh, GCS was 15 out of 15, and she was only minimally drowsy, and pupils also were equal and reacting to light, 2 millimeter bilaterally equal. And uh, there was no any evidence of any rigidity, any uh, uh, clonus as such. And uh, GRBS we had checked it was 92 and uh, exposure wise temperature was also on normal side 97.2 degree Fahrenheit. And uh, we did adjuncts to primary so we took an ECG and uh, in ECG it showed a uh, sinus tachycardia and uh, this uh, there was no any QRS prolongation. Uh, the QRS uh, interval was uh, 88 and uh, the uh, QTC was around uh, 450. And uh, QRS duration was 88, 88 milliseconds. Ah, 88 milliseconds. Less than <coughs> 1, 120. 120. Yes. So it is less than like 2, 1 and a half to 2 small squares. 2 small squares. And the QTC was 450. And uh, there was no any prominent R waves in the AVR lead. And uh, then further, we had also taken a VBG. It didn't show any uh, metabolic acidosis. pH was 7.378 uh, or any alkylate abnormalities. Sodium was 138, potassium 3.8, uh, creat was also normal 0.57, bicarb was 23.1. And uh, further uh, coming to the uh, secondary survey, <coughs> we have patient, uh, she is a known case of uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, she, uh, due to uh, internal family issues, uh, at around 12.30 pm she had consumed uh, around two strips of desvenlafaxin, which is 20 tablets, 10 in each strip. 20 tablets of 100 mg which is 2 grams and also could have been uh, 2 strips of same 10 ta 20 tablets uh, of 25 mg so it comes around 500 mg and after that she had uh, gone for uh, uh, another activity and that time she had a, a giddiness episode which is a presyncope, blackout of vision followed by loss of balance so she came there was no any secondary near. trauma history okay. there was no other uh, history of any um, uh, altered sensorium or any uh, palpitations uh, chest pain uh, okay. So, uh, what we are having, we have a patient with an atypical antipsychotic with SNRI, SNRI the group of uh, drugs. Okay. SNRI, these are all newer drugs that have come up. So, when you look into the traditionally, when you look into the typical uh, antipsychotics, then you have the antidepressants. Okay. antidepressants. To start off with the tricyclic. classical tricyclic antidepressant. antidepressant, then you have the SSRIs, then the SNRIs. SNRIs. So, uh, this is the usual uh, spectrum what we have seen right now. So, uh, what is the most deadliest thing for any of these group of drugs is the arrhythmia. So, that is the major uh, concern that we have. So, whenever we get a patient with such toxicity, our concern will be as you rightly said is to take an ECG and look for the uh, features of any uh, 1, 2, 3. What are the 3, 4 things that you want to look for? First one will be the AVR. 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 R wave, R wave prolongation, uh, mm. R wave more than 3 mm uh, or we have to see the ratio, RS ratio, it is more than 0 0.7 also. We can say as uh, it QRS, there is a sodium channel blockade causing a QRS uh, R wave as you see. So the sodium channel blockade when we uh, classically call start from the TCA, it will affect the fast sodium channel. Fast sodium so channel. what are the, why there is an arrhythmia that is happening? Because of the prolongation, prolongation of the QRS. refractory period. These are things that hmm. normal. It blocks the prolongation of the refractory period. The fast sodium channel is blocked. So, as a result, you might get an arrhythmia at any point of time. So, the next point will be your QRS duration. duration. QRS duration, whenever it is increasing more than 100 milliseconds, you should be alerted. And more than 120, that is 3 small squares is the time that say, okay, this is more than 3 small squares. We need to start an intervention. 
So uh, you think about your SSRIs or SNRI, whichever the drug that is causing a QRS duration widening, the treatment is with your uh, so sodium bicarbonate, soda bicarbonate soda therapy. Bicarbonate. So soda bicarbonate, what does it do? It blocking of the, the sodium, sodium channel will be covered uh -huh. and then whatever it will make the blood acidic so that whatever the TC is that it will not be able to bind and, and do its block. action. So blocking will happen. So these are the two options of soda bicarbonate. Now how much and what soda bicarbonate you wanted to give? What is the dosing of soda uh, bicarbonate? 1 to 2 molecular per There are two preparations that you should be aware of. 8.4 percentage and 7.8 percentage. There are the two preparations that is available. 8.4 percentage is what we commonly use. Uh, that is 1 ml, 1 molecular. And uh, around, uh, you need to give somewhere around 50 to 100 molecular mm -hmm. as an IV bolus. bolus dose. IV bolus dose. Until so corrected. whenever you are seeing it, you need to have an IV bolus and how much you can repeat? We can repeat until the uh, uh, QRS syndrome comes back to normal. Okay. And or else, what is the target pH that you wanted to achieve? 7.5 to 7.55. 7.5 to 7.55 or the sodium level of 150 to 155. That is the maximum how much we can give. You can go ahead because it's a hypertonic saline again. Hypertonic saline. Uh, so you have to think for hypernatremia also. So 150 to 155 or a pH of 7.5 to 7.55. So that is our target that we need to keep in our mind. So you can maybe repeat, maybe some infusion also can be given. If there are, there are some thoughts like infusion should not be given, infusion no need, you need to give bolus therapy only. So what will you do uh, if uh, soda bicarbonate, even after giving soda bicarbonate, the worst thing is that you can have hypotension developing. So what will you manage the hypotension or how will you manage if the QRS duration is not getting corrected? Further, we can try with hypertonic saline and Hi as well as lidocaine also can be. Hypertonic saline and lidocaine. lidocaine. If there is arrhythmia, you can give lidocaine. lidocaine. There is just QRS prolongation with arrhythmia, definitely lidocaine can be mm -hmm. given. And uh, what is the other option? You can also try intralipid emulsions. Mm -hmm. So intralipid emulsion will be the other option. 1.5 milligram per kilogram, you can start off with. Intralipid emulsion also can be tried in uh, if this is not working and even magnesium sulfate. The tower said the definitely magnesium sulfate, we will give magnesium sulfate, two, 2 gram can be given. So the first line of therapy will be a soda bicarbonate and soda bicarbonate, if there is hypotension, you can give fluid challenge. If there is no improvement, then you can start the normal vasopressors. Okay. So preferably noradrenaline okay. because it will not uh, increase the heart rate also. Okay. So you can start on noradrenaline and then you can titrate. And uh, the next option will be, as you said, hypertonic saline is a very good 3% uh, saline, the classical 3% saline. Again, the target will be the same of that sodium and uh, we don't want any hypernatremia to happen. So uh, that is regarding. And what will have, what will you do when the patient develops seizures? Uh, when the patient develops seizures, uh, we'll, uh, first of all, uh, Put them in the left lateral position. Yeah, and that's fine. But yeah. the routine ah, first, I am agreeing no, no, to that. Uh, benzodiazepines, you'll have to start. And most importantly, we should be avoiding phenytoin. That is the most phenytoin, phosphenytoin we should avoid because that is again a sodium channel blockade agent. So when you are giving arrhythmia potency will be very high. So if at all seizure, benzodiazepine will be the best option that you need to give. Okay. So benzodiazepine is, is the, this is the classical TCA toxicity or any of the psychotics that is causing QTC prolongation of the QRS duration. You can go ahead with this. But again, the symptom manifestation depends upon the amount of consumption that they have done. Mild, moderate, severe, starting off with minimal giddiness like this patient was complaining, drowsiness, giddiness, seizure, coma and various presentation you can have with the all the TCAs and almost the presentation will be the same. Now coming uh, to the most important part of your uh, what you had the atyp typical antipsychotics, QTAPIN. So QTAPIN again the QTC prolongation QTC is the most is. important thing. So again you need to do the Potential same uh, uh, what we have uh, discussed here and most importantly we should not be giving an additional drug that will prolong the QTC. That part we have to be very clear. They will have vomiting. So you are giving on time sertron, that will again prolong the QTC. Mm -hmm. You should not give some, uh, some antibiotic like acetromycin thinking that there is some infection. So that again will produce QTC prolongation. So you should be knowing what are the common drugs that causes prolongation of the QTC. That should be again avoided. Now coming to the uh, SNRI or SSRI toxicity. So, uh, because uh, isolated injections are very rare, we can get isolated injection, but uh, if isolated injection happens, again the spectrum of presentation will be, what will be the patient presentation? Uh, usually, the, uh, the uh, similar to the serotonin syndrome presentations we will be getting, uh, serotonin manifestation. syndrome is a severe form of, yeah. severe form, yeah. but usually what will and, be the presentation? Uh, you can have mild presentation. Agitations or any coma, seizures. 
serious side effects can be there or any severe side effects such as tachycardia hypertension uh, then you can go to the serotonin syndrome so serotonin syndrome how will you uh, clinically how will you say okay this patient is having serotonin syndrome so basically a clinical diagnosis of serotonin syndrome so we'll have a patient who has uh, with a known case of intake of serotoninergic drug like with the trial which all drugs Which mao in, inhibitors uh, mao inhibitors then, uh, then uh, ssri snri a typical psychotics okay. all these are very common to produce so then the patient how the patient presentation will be temperature temperature uh, triad it is mainly yes so what are the things uh, we have uh, M- this mental status changes uh, such as sedation coma or any uh, stupor like that if uh, then another one is the autonomic instability or the dis- dysautonomia uh, fluctuations in the bp hypertensive mm. or hypertension and then uh, tachycardia and bradycardia and respiratory rate fluctuations and then uh, we'll have the neuro uh, motor manifestations such as rigidity clonus uh, akathesias dyskinesias like that manifestation so once you diagnose it's a clinical diagnosis how will you treat it uh, we have to uh, stop the serotonergic agent and okay. then we'll have to uh, control that uh, rigidity tremors and the agitation hi- hypertension and all with the benzodiazepine okay you can what is the specific you can tell serotonin syndrome you can give this lorazepam to um, ciprohyptin you can try ciprohyptin Ciprohyptidine. Ciprohyptidine is a dopamine antagonist. Antagonist. So we can give ciprohyptidine. What is the dosing of ciprohyptidine? Uh, you have to give 12 milligram. 12 milligram. You have to give. It is available as a syrup. Mostly it is available as a syrup. So why we are using ciprohyptidine these days? Mostly why we give ciprohyptidine? What is the major use of ciprohyptidine? Some very rarely some patients will come that we don't have any appetite. So that is the time when we usually prescribe ciprohyptidine. Otherwise, ciprohyptidine we are not using regularly. So uh, availability of ciprohyptidine might be challenging, but uh, usually it is available as a syrup. You can give twelve milligram is the dosage that you need to remember whenever you are suspecting serotonin syndrome. Ciprohyptidine can be given. Okay. So uh, and again, your benzodiazepine, as you said, for seizure, rigidity, all those these stuff. But so, if we are ciprohyptidine available, that will be a very good option. Okay. Now, how will you differentiate it with okay. neuroleptic malignant syndrome? Uh, basically, neuroleptic malignant syndrome pupil changes won't be there here. Uh, in uh, certain cases, it is uh, dilated pupil manifestation, and also the uh, motor symptom, neuromotor symptoms will be seen more in serotonin syndrome, such as the rigidities and the clonus and all. And more often involves the uh, lower extremities, angle clonus is most what is seen. CK and total CK will be raised in neuroleptic malignant syndrome more than thousands so or one lakh also up to one lakh it can go. And the other uh, thing is the uh, GI uh, issue, which is uh, we'll get more bowel sounds in uh, serotonin syndrome. Increased bowel sounds with the manifestations of GIT symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, mostly in serotonin. Otherwise, there another one it will be either decreased or normal bowel sounds. And uh, yeah, these three are okay. the main differentiation. Difference. Features. How will you treat NMS? NMS uh, also same. Uh, we'll have to stop the offending drug and also uh, start with benzodiazepines for seizures or uh, if any. Uh, muscle rigidity is personal. You know, we can uh, use a dantrolene, which is a direct uh, muscle and relaxant. Availability, not availability is less. It's more available in uh, uh, availability. What where else you need to give dantrolene for him? Uh, where else malignant hyperthermia? Malignant hyperthermia. So which group of patient? So some group of patients have come to the ED. Uh, so uh, you wanted to give some drugs. So can you tell me one drug succinylcholine. that succinylcholine? Succinyl so succinylcholine is the one drug. Which group of drug? Which group of patient that you will suspect that they can have uh, malignant hyper stance of developing malignant hyperthermia? Related like anesthesia. Ah, inhalational anesthetics are there. Anesthesia. Then uh, succinylcholine is there. So what? Any muscle dystrophy patients, group of patients, genetic yes. uh, muscle dystrophy, they are very prone to develop this malignant hyperthermia. So what they usually the hospital does whenever they are planning for a surgery uh, for a, these group of patients, they will Dandron. keep dandruff sodium Dandron. as a backup. Without that backup, they should not be attempting that surgery. So that is a very. If you don't have uh, dandruff sodium, then other items like bromocriptin, bromocriptin all can be tried. So dandruff sodium is not available. You can go ahead with bromocriptin. So uh, that is very uh, crucial thing. So. Now uh, you have a patient. Uh, you wanted to intubate the patient. Okay, so the same patient you wanted to intubate. So what will be the preferred uh, regimens that you need to think of? Anything specifically you want to consider here? Depending on, the, uh, uh, we can use the uh, routine. Atomidate is safe. That is what atomidate you can give left and right. But seizure again very rarely it can cause myoclonus. So you are giving benzodiazepine. 
on top of etomidate if you are giving that is fine rocuronium is very very safe again so rocuronium with this thing you can definitely go ahead and uh, even uh, ketamine ketamine, ketamine uh, sedation can be given but it can increase the heart rate but ketamine if there is associated hypotension and all ketamine also can be tried so uh, any role for any your extra corporeal therapies no no uh, as of now uh, when you there are very few case reports for tca toxicity with coupled with multiple drug overdoses where the prolonged cardiac arrest they had like 2 to 3 hours of cpr was continuing they have attempted uh, e cpr and uh, ecmo was initiated and patient survived so that is only one case report that is available as of now for regarding the uh, tca toxicity so uh, what else we wanted to add on so for this patient initially uh, she presented outside hospital in 2 hours they started with gastric lavage that we can see uh, do and uh, basically depending on the preparation if it is a normal preparation we can do up to 2 hours then uh, ideally within 1 hour and if it is a prolonged preparation we can give up to 4 hours 4 hours. hours then we can uh, add on with the activated, activated charcoal, charcoal 50 gram uh, or in 1 gram per kg in children and uh, then uh, multi dose in if there is a prolonged release multi dose can also be tried and uh, then further uh, is the uh, conservative management as we uh, discussed and we need to look in for the offending agents whatever he has consumed and, and avoid any additional serotonergic agents that is the key thing avoid any other and again for agitation don't give haloperidol that is another thing that i wanted to give haloperidol what does it do it will again increase the qtc so agitation you are seeing you think that they are psychiatry bipolar disorder they are creating this thing then you go ahead have a tendency to give haloperidol so haloperidol itself will be the next moment the patient will develop an arrhythmia so that haloperidol phenytoin these are the common drugs that phenytoin for seizure to be avoided haloperidol for agitation to be avoided so the common things that you wanted to remember and target sodium what yeah, you want and ta- target uh, ps what you need to achieve and uh, uh, the uh, further maybe you need to start on an infusion here the bicarbonate therapy there is no point in calculating the deficit mm. it is not we are not treating the metabolic acidosis we are treating the sodium channel blockade but here we don't want to create that much of alkalosis so 7.5 to 7.55 is the cut off whatever we need okay so how is the patient doing she's okay yeah, patient was she was just managed conservatively maybe she won't have consumed to that extent or maybe the gastric lavage which was given initially she which would have been effective we don't know uh, that could be the reason she has not because she has taken a significant in amount, amount of it, when you calculate the, the toxicity the severe toxicity more than 1.5 gram when lavax is uh, significant to cause effects and more than 4 to 4.5 can cause cardiac toxicity Cut. and for uh, this thing also this 3 gram cut off kitty happen 3 gram above it will mostly go but she has only gone to 500 mg 500 mg so there when the vaccine component might have may have created may but she is at present she is okay. okay and uh, any of these agents majority of the time uh, the antidote when you say antidote will be soda bicarbonate mm-hmm. so where to use soda bicarbonate qrs duration just keep one thing in your mind qrs duration increasing don't hesitate to start soda bicarbonate you give soda bicarbonate let it come down uh, the qrs duration let it come down and continuous uh, qrs monitoring and also keep in your mind regarding other electrolytes in, uh, yeah, because they will be having multiple episodes of vomiting so because uh, vomiting rhabdomyolysis all these complication electrolyte disturbances hypokalemia should be avoided so all those things you should be aware of okay fine thank you